Hi everyone! So, uh, real quick, just wanted to make a recap video for the end of today, day three of social distance learning. Um, I didn't have as many questions today, but but one of the common questions I keep noticing for, for you all is that, uh, depending on if we're working on parabolas, ellipses, or, parabola, or hyperbolas, um, there's confusion on how to find A, B, and C. So I thought maybe I could put that in a nice little resource here and sum it up. Also, I did put a little poll on Edsby underneath here if you haven't looked at it yet. I, I don't know if I'm being overwhelming. I feel like I'm putting out a lot of videos um, just because like, they're easy for me. It literally takes me as long as it takes to, to talk to you to do it, and I'm sitting at a computer chair doing nothing. So I kind of just keep recording them, um, but I don't want you to feel like I'm putting out too much, and it's like overwhelming you because there's so much. Uh, but I don't, I don't know how it's going. Like, Do you feel like you're being overwhelmed by too many videos, or do you feel like I'm putting out enough videos um, to kind of help you get through this? So please answer that. I won't feel bad. I'll do less if I need to. Uh, and, and just individually send things out instead of posting it to everybody. But I kind of just figure if I'm recording it for one person, I might as well record it for everyone. So that's what I've been doing. So um, let's go ahead and talk then about A, B, and C in each case. So we have our parabolas, our ellipses, and hyperbolas. Okay, so with those three, in all three cases, we have an A, a B, and a C that we can find, right? All three of them have that. So in my parabola, A, B, and C. Well, there's a theme that you're going to notice. C is always, in every single one of these, to find the length of C, it's always going to be the focus, right? The focus is going to help us. Actually, with, with parabolas, though, we don't even really call it C. With parabolas, we actually call it P. Right, And so P is going to be, if I draw this parabola right here, P is going to be this length right here from the center or the vertex of my parabola to the focus. Right, And we call this C. So it's always the focus to the vertex or the center of the parabola. The parabola calls it a vertex, but it's kind of like the center. They all have like a center point, right? There's a center of an ellipse and a center of a hyperbola. Uh, in a parabola, they call it the vertex, but it is the center point of the parabola. It's this point right here where it stops, right? You'll also know that that's the length. The directrix is also the same distance away from the vertex. So if they give you the focus in the, the center, you can find what P or C is. If they give you the directrix in the center or the vertex, you can find C from there. If they give you the focus in the directrix, you could find the center and then proceed to figure out what C or P is, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, actually, sorry, I don't know why I put this here. Parabolas don't have an A or a B, right? Uh, Mr. Knock, what are you doing? Parabolas don't have an A or B. They just have their H and their K that come from the center, so we don't have to worry about that part there. Um, moving over to the ellipse. So in an ellipse, we have either a shape like this or a shape like that. It just depends. The top one kind of looks like a, like a loaf of bread. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay, so uh, in there, they give you, they use some interesting names. Um, a, B, C, right? On IXL, I saw they've been calling it covertices and vertices. So let's kind of use that language just to make sure that we're getting comfortable with that language as well, because I don't want you uh, getting hung up on that. So a vertice is always going to be these points on the long end of it. So in that, that horizontal one, it's the two points on those ends that are at the, the long ends, whereas in the uh, vertical version of it, the co uh, vertices are going to be here and here. So vertex or vertices in plural. The covertices are going to be these these ones right here. This one right here would be a covertice, and this one right here would be covertices, and these two would be the covertices, or the covertex. So that light pink color is the covertex. And then we have a couple other things to focus on. Let's do in this light green. These right here would be my foci, or singular, the focus. And one more thing to worry about. And that, of course, is the, the center, right? The center of the ellipse is obviously at the 
center of it. Boop. Okay, so with that, the couple things that we need to know how to find on here. Um, firstly, A. Actually, let's start with C. I, I think starting with C is just a, a good place to start because it's, it's kind of the same, right? It kind of follows that same pattern. It's always the focus to the center. However far it is from the focus to the center. So in this case, it would be right here. This would be my C value. My A and my B, and what you'll see with most of the problems, I'm not going to say all of them, most of them give you either A or B, and then you have to find the other one. So starting with A, A is always going to be the distance from the center all the way to the vertex. So vertex to the center. You'll notice that they all have something to do with the center of the graph. And to get B, you're going to do the co-vertex. forgot to put an A right there. That's the A. The co-vertex to the center. Your co-vertex to your center is B. So if they give you A, B, or C, or give you two of them, you can always find them by using your Pythagorean theorem. But remember, with the ellipse, it's kind of backwards. Because in this case, A and B are actually B and C, right? Here's A, B, right here, this little triangle. B and C make up the two legs of the triangle, and then the hypotenuse is A. So B squared plus C squared equals A squared. Again, for that horizontal one, it just kind of turns it. Instead of B going up and down vertically, now B is going to run and be this horizontal part. Instead of A going horizontally, A is now going to run up and down and be this, this vertical part right here. Right? And C is now going to be the distance from the green point to the purple, or sorry, the red point right here going uh, vertical as well. So those are those three. <coughs> <coughs> the last three to focus on, or sorry, the last section to focus on would be your hyperbola, A, A B, and C. Again, uh, C is still the focus to the center. Now let's draw that picture because that might help us a little bit. Um, I'm going to do my best not to go off the graph here. So a hyperbola kind of looks like two ellipses, right? Um, and I'm going to use the same colors that are over on this left-hand side so I don't have to rewrite them. But <clears throat> my vertex, my vertex of my hyperbola is going to be here and here, right? Those two points that make up like the, the vertexes of a parabola if it was a parabola. My covertex, my covertex, oh well this doesn't have covertexes. I mean it kind of does. They're gonna be they're gonna be up here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure they gave us any like that though. I, I, in fact I'm not even gonna say I'm not sure if they didn't. There is none like that in your IXL, but the covertexes would be there. The foci are going to be inside these parabolas. So you'd have one focus here and one focus here. <clears throat> and then lastly, we have our center. And our center is going to be right here. Now, I'm going to do my best to not make this horribly ugly, but I'm about to make it horribly ugly. Your your uh, ellipses have these, these asymptotes that run through them. Oh, OK, one side's done. Oh, uh, that's right. I'm a rock star. Look how good that came out. Okay, so those are your asymptotes. The way that you're able to find the co-vertexes is actually based off this num this value right here. If you go over here, so so let's let's just talk about this as we work through it. From the red point to the orange point. Now remember, this is just the the version that's pointing uh, left and right. You could also have one going up and down, and you would just have to turn everything to, to orient it the correct way. So the distance here from this red point to this orange point, from the center to the vertex, that represents A. Okay, The center to the vertex represents A. An easy way to figure out where the, uh, the co-vertex is at is that you start here. Go here where your vertex is, and you would count how many units it takes to get up here to the asymptote, right? You go from the vertex up to the asymptote. And whatever you get is going to be the same distance as it is from the center to the co-vertex. So if you just go over, 
that's A. Up to the asymptote, that's B. But really, it's the center to the covertex. I'm sorry I switched it. Like over here, I put the center last, and I don't know why I changed it as I was working through it, but I did. So again, if you start at the center and go over, that's A, and then go up to the asymptote, and that will be B. There's your A and your B. Really, really easy to find if you just practice those. Um, there is some other terminology that they sometimes use for as you work through this, though. Sometimes for A, they'll give you what's called the transverse axis. The transverse axis, though, is from vertex to vertex. So if you're going vertex to vertex, here's the vertex all the way to this vertex over here. What that tells me is the center right here is the red point. So here to here, orange to orange would be the transverse axis. So C, or sorry, A is here and here. There's two A's. So if they give you the transverse, you have to cut it in half to get A. <clears throat> Similarly, they can do something with the uh, B as well. They can give you the conjugate axis. The conjugate axis is the one that runs from this covertice to this covertice, so all the way down. So if they give you that going down, again, that's B and B twice. So the conjugate axis gives you B, but you have to cut it in half to get B, right? It's not the whole conjugate axis, axis is half the conjugate axis. And being mindful that when you get into this, notice that this worked out the same way. A squared and B squared is equal to C squared. So if they do by chance give you the distance to the focus, right, the focus would be here. This distance is the same as this distance here. So here to here is C, and that's also this C here. So you use just regular Pythagorean theorem. It doesn't end up being a weird Pythagorean theorem. It's the normal Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so, so I know that was like 12 minutes long. Hopefully that helps you find A, B, and C, though, if that's really holding you up. So uh, that can get you kind of going in the right direction. Uh, again, as always, let me know if you have questions. I'm here for you. Bye, all.